Hello, today I'd like to talk about the books that made me the reader that I am today. The first one is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Now unlike a lot of readers, I haven't been a reader for my whole life. I read when I was a kid and I enjoyed it, but I wasn't, you know, a super bookworm. And then when I hit about 11 or 12, I actually stopped reading entirely. I only read the books I was assigned in school. And more than that, I didn't really think reading was for me. I was bored by it, it didn't interest me. And I never anticipated becoming a reader. And then in 2012, the Vlog Brothers had a book club where they assigned the reading of Fahrenheit 451. Now, I was a pretty avid viewer of theirs, and I decided, what the hell, it's a short book, it's easy to read. I, I wasn't assigned it in school, so I had no prior experience reading it. And I absolutely loved it. It gripped me like nothing else. It was short. It was weird. It was literary in the sense that it had a lot to analyse and piece together, but it wasn't difficult to read. And I completely fell down the rabbit hole of books and reading ever since. In fact, I met Hank Green a couple of years ago at Australia's VidCon, and I actually got him to sign the front of the book because, even though it was a bit weird because he, you know, didn't write the book, it felt appropriate for me because this book has led to every other book I've read and loved since. So many readers have been reading their whole lives that they can't really pinpoint the origin down to one particular book and I think it's kind of cool that I can. It also led to a particular interest in modern classics and dystopian classics. It also led to an interest in kind of weird books and books where I don't really know what's going on and I have no idea where it's going or what's going to happen next. Books like Slaughterhouse-Five or Rendezvous with Rama or even something more recent like The Library at Mount Char. I can all link those books back to Fahrenheit 451. The next book is Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. So after I had read Fahrenheit 451 and I had decided that reading was actually kind of cool, really the only books I had available to me were books that were on my mum's or my sister's shelves. And so my reading tastes hadn't really developed yet. I was just reading what I had access to. And while I enjoyed them, nothing really spoke to me as an individual. And then I read this book. It wasn't... I. To be honest, I have no idea where I got the recommendation from, but my mum didn't know about it, my sister didn't know about it. It was a book that was for me, and it completely opened the entire book world to me. I was completely ignorant about the modern book publishing industry. I had no idea there were so many genres and different contemporary authors. I I didn't know about any of it, and it this book broadened my idea of what books could be about. It's a historical fiction novel about a about a con with female characters, there's an asylum, there's queer identity. I I loved it and this book signifies the moment that I began to follow my own interest in reading rather than just reading what I had available. Now, in one sense it did kind of leave me astray with the historical fiction because I read this and I loved it so much that I was like, oh, historical fiction, that must be my genre. And I ended up reading a lot of historical fiction that I really didn't care for. And I, in hindsight, I realised that, that it was actually the other elements of this novel that captured me. And it led to an interest in female authors and female-led stories. Based on my love of this, I read things like Jane Eyre, Americana, even something very contemporary like Everything I Never Told You. I can link back to Fingersmith. The next book is Into Thin Air by John Krakauer. I read this shortly after I read Fingersmith. 2014 was a pivotal year in my reading and this was the first non-fiction book I think I ever read and it completely opened that world to me. At that point I'd never even considered non-fiction as something that could interest me. I thought it was all like boring stuffy history books which ironically I've recently been reading. But this book made me realise that non-fiction can be even more compelling than fiction because it really happened and it can contain a new level of complexity such such as no straight antagonist or protagonist and storytelling conventions are thrown out or at least adjusted to fit the reality of what actually happened. Without this book, I wouldn't have read any of the nonfiction that has affected me over the years, such as Tiny Beautiful Things by Cheryl Strayed, Between the World and Me by Tana Hassi Coates, How to Skelter by Vincent Belosi. It really did open the doors to nonfiction, which is such a broad, beautiful genre, and it's become more and more important to me over the years. 
Now, many books have meant a lot to me over the years, but these three stand out even further than just being some of my favourites because I can directly relate who I am as a reader today to reading them. Let me know if there are any books like this for you that signify a significant shift in your reading taste or your conception of reading. Uh, thank you for watching.